Hey everyone, if scientists ever discover a beer that comes in capsule form, then you could say that it was a bitter pill to swallow. Apologies, that was dreadful. Something that is going to be a bitter pill to swallow for establishment politicians, though, is that there's some elections coming quite soon. In the past, you'd normally get two parties, both of whom are variations on the same, like having to choose between water or molten ice. However, in both Europe and the US in the last year or so, we've seen the emergence of parties and candidates that look set to do pretty well, even if in previous elections they would have probably received fewer votes than if Botswana had offered to host the Winter Olympics. All across Europe, there's been a resurgence in smaller nationalist parties, and the first demonstration of this will be this weekend, when Spain has its third election in four years, possibly a preview of what Theresa May's upcoming future of never-ending leadership challenges looks set to look like. In truth, however, it's more a preview of next month's European elections, when traditionally a low turnout combined with a solid vote from the main party's bases is guaranteed a stitch-up and a return to business as usual. This, of course, was how Nick Clegg became a member of the European Parliament back in the 90s, when he won a seat after a few dozen Liberal Democrat activists and a stray dog turned up one Thursday to vote. This week, however, saw not only the emergence of Nigel Farage's Brexit party, it also goes straight to the top of the opinion polls, with many local Conservative Party activists switching allegiance faster than a sports commentator who, having realised that the previously British athlete is set to lose, reverts back to describing them as Scottish. The Scotland connection actually is the most amazing part in all of this, really. The rise of the SNP in Scotland following the independence referendum saw the utter collapse of the Labour Party in areas where their votes used to be weighed rather than counted. And yet now the Conservative Party is surprised to see the rise of a mainstream Brexit party challenging it, somehow all geared around a singular issue. No concept of cause and effect, no learning from history. The only thing that comes close in political short sight in this is the SNP's apparent new policy that referendums don't have to be binding, apparently. You know, that's what it, they may live to regret in another decade or so when Scotland votes in favour favour of independence and Tony Blair once more crawls out of the woodwork to lecture BBC listeners about how people earning less than 100,000 a year are too racist and ill-informed to know what's best for them. Of course, Theresa could kill the Brexit party dead in the water next week, in fact, by just actually leaving the EU without a deal, but that would be like when you promised to give up wine on December the 31st. You know, it's easier said than done. And Theresa May might not like wine quite as much as Jean-Claude Juncker, but she does like the EU just as much, remember. Anyway, see you next week. If you like these, click subscribe.